house was built in 1896, we bought it in 1983, and it's fairly maintenance intensive. Our gas boiler was running out of its reasonable life expectancy, so we had to do something. So we had the choice, renew gas, which was never going to be getting cheaper, uh, switch to oil, which again was never going to be getting cheaper. We, we have lots of wood, so wood seemed to make sense, but then there's quite a choice of wood. We wanted it to be reasonably automatic, which took us towards pellets, but we have so many trees that we want to be able to burn logs. We would have gone chip instead of pellet um, if we had the storage capacity. We had the radiators in in the first place and they provided enough heat for the house. We looked at um, ground source heat pump and all the advice we received was you needed a well insulated, relatively airtight property and we just don't have that. We had a number of people in and the people we chose were best able to explain east-west solar panels because we don't have a south-facing roof. The explanation they gave tied in with my understanding, so I think I, think I ended up trusting the, the supplier. Um, but we then wanted the same supplier to also do the biomass boiler. They were not an experienced biomass boiler installer, but they could do the design for the system. So it was a, com a, a combination of the solar installer and the UK importer of the boiler who, who did the installation in the end. But it was, there was a single contract with, with the solar supplier. And this, this boiler gave us automatic pellet feed and a large log capacity. Um, some of the, the German ones were much, much larger, much more expensive and on the cheaper end of the scale where we could take a large log capacity, they typically didn't have uh, automatic pellet feeds and automatic startup. So they would have required a lot more intervention. This, this boiler is very low in intervention if you don't want to intervene, but it also takes a lot of logs. So we want to be able to just be lazy and have it start automatically if we've done nothing about it. However, we have to buy pellets, so they cost money. So we, we try and use logs as much as possible, um, but we use pellets for convenience. The boiler is around five. The supporting equipment for the boiler was another two to three. Solar was six, seven. We had to have some chimney work done. And then we had to have some building work done to build the boiler room, data logging, and the heat exchanger that was around about a thousand pounds. So overall, it was around seventeen, eighteen thousand. I think the total grant for both the solar and the biomass together were was around fifteen hundred. Um, so we got the solar panels in in the September. We needed to get the biomass boiler in by the end of October. So we had a. We had to tie that with taking the old boiler out, constructing the boiler house and getting the new one in and commissioned. This is the, the heart of the system. This is a, a multi-fuel uh, boiler. We use pellets which, which are in here. We have four or five days pellets in there. I guess we put in about ten of these on a Sunday and then That would la normally last through to Thursday, Friday if it hasn't been too cold. And we, we also put logs, uh, pallets, anything wooden, then we just, we just feed in here. This is the heat store. Uh, it's 1,000 litres. Uh, these red things are the expansion tanks for the heat store. The heat store is currently at 65. And at the back, we have the control system for the central heating, which pumps out of the heat store into the radiators and into the hot water cylinder. And also at the back, we have the solar control system. And obviously it's very hot in here. Um, so we, we've got a heat exchanger up, up at the top where we suck in cold, fresh air, take in the hot air from this very warm room, and then we blow it through uh, and heat the kitchen and the lounge with the surplus heat from here. Okay, so, so this, this represents the, the integration of the, the solar system, which is very much to the left in the diagram, and the, the biomass heater, which is very much to the right. So 
we have the east panel, the west panel. So at the moment the west panel is up at 35 degrees. These are the valves. So the valve is open. It's pumping 420 litres per hour from the west panel into the hot water cylinder. So when the hot water cylinder um, has reached its maximum, which is around 60 degrees, it will divert and heat the, the large heat store. So this, this represents the, the multi-fuel burner. Um, obviously it just goes in and heats the heat store. We've got top-up insulation in the loft and where we have wooden floors with access underneath we have insulated with insulation blocks and uh, aluminium foil. And for some of the walls that in rooms that we've decorated recently we've got a, a, a thick lining insulation paper, it's about half an inch thick, which seems to make quite a difference to condensation so I, so I guess it, it's doing its job. In the three main rooms that are, that are lived in um, there are fires in there which are Two of them are wood burners, one's a, one's a gas fire. Um, if we ever get to a point where we're, we're fairly airtight, then we'll put a, explicitly put a vent in for them. For pellets, we were getting them delivered by lorry, uh, which turned out to be a very inefficient process. So now um, we just buy one carload at a time from a local supplier who is also a consumer of, of pellets. So he has a small customer base and we just go down every other Saturday or every three weeks and uh, take a, bring a carload back. Um, we have quite a lot of wood in the garden and in the woods um, and it's just a question of uh, being organised enough to have it ready, uh, cut, split, stored, dried, to be burnt. So uh, at the moment I'm burning uh, damaged pallets, just cutting them up and burning them, removing the metal from the fire. I've got a, a large delivery of wholesale timber, which is something which should last the next two or three years. Just a, an 18 tonne load of that, um, and then top that up with just natural thinnings from the garden. The, the border starts on pellets, and when we put um, logs in, uh, we're effectively substituting logs for pellets. Uh, the system will try for a while to feed more pellets until it senses the temperature is high enough to indicate combustion um, and then once uh, the logs are burning it just won't feed pellets because it sees uh, successful combustion and energy going out into the heat store. Once the timber runs out um, it then works out it needs more heat and it blows air in, nothing happens so it puts some pellets in, blows the air it goes up in temperature and it's, it's, it satisfies the demand again. Very pleased with it. Um, it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, the house is warmer, it's drier. Um, we get instant heat um, because we're heating, from the, we're heating the house from the heat store. So as soon as we turn the pump on, we have 60 degrees in the radiators. So instant heat is good. If we need uh, hot water topped up, again, that's, that's very, very quick. In terms of savings, I guess we're probably saving at least 1500 a year and our, our expenditure out of the household is really around 500 pounds a year on pellets. There's annual maintenance for the biomass boiler which is essentially chipping out the, the creosote and the deposits which, which are built all around it. Cost of 300 pounds as, as an annual cost quite high so I think maybe next year I'll look at how much of that I can do myself. Weekly maintenance is the heat exchanger tubes where we need to go and uh, scrape out the, the deposits inside that. And at the moment we have a daily maintenance task which is remove the nails and the staples from the pallets that we're burning, getting those out of the way. The solar thermal panels need uh, maintenance every two years. If this house had been built 90 degrees round so that we could have got south facing roofs it would have been cheaper, would have been easier. Um, if the house was insulated better, we could, have, we could have had a smaller boiler, but I think when we, when we look at the house we have, there's not a lot we could have done differently. Research the energy sources that you have easily. So, so in our case, we have logs. Um, and I guess also find a, a supplier that uh, can do the job you need.